Hi, everyone. I'm Anne Marie Green. I'm Vladimir Dutier. The United States has announced charges against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange just hours after he was taken into custody in London. Assange was dragged from the Ecuadorian embassy where he's been for the last seven years. His arrest came after Ecuador dropped his asylum status, essentially evicting him from the embassy. The U.S. has requested Assange be extradited, and British authorities have confirmed he was placed under arrest on behalf of U.S. law enforcement. Now, there are also multiple reports that Assange has been found guilty by a U.K. judge of skipping bail. He faces a maximum sentence of 12 months. Earlier, we spoke to CBS News correspondents uh, Paula Reed and Imtiaz Tieb uh, about Assange's uh, arrest. Paula explained what the charges were that he was facing here in the United States. Federal prosecutors have charged him in a hacking conspiracy. There were questions about how exactly they would be able to charge WikiLeaks or Assange because their argument is that they are protected under the First Amendment. But here, instead of going after the publishing of this information, they're going after how exactly he accessed it. They're accusing him of engaging in a conspiracy with Chelsea Manning, the former intelligence analyst. In these charging documents, federal prosecutors allege that Assange helped Manning hack into some systems that otherwise she would not have had access to and encouraged him to her to continue hacking. So they are charged here with a conspiracy to hack computers, which is very interesting because, again, his lawyers have vowed to fight this, arguing that the organization and its founder, Assange, are protected under First Amendment, under the First Amendment, arguing that they're doing the same thing that newspapers do. They are publishing information uh, in the public interest. But here it appears prosecutors have narrowly tailored this case uh, to focus on other alleged offenses in the hope of successfully extraditing him and then successfully prosecuting him here in the United States. So, Paula, how does it work starting now if, uh, you know, they request that he be extradited to the United States? What's the relationship like with the U.K.? Is it sort of does the process continue? No questions asked or does it matter what sort of charges he's facing here? Well, there'll be a lot of questions that will be asked. His lawyer has confirmed that his arrest this morning was based on a U.S. extradition request. Now we know the charges underlying that request. And even though the U.S. and the U.K. have a pretty friendly relationship in terms of, of extradition based on their treaty, this is still going to be a lengthy process. He is expected to fight this. It could take could take years uh, before he arrives here in the U.S. to face these charges. Now, typically, most foreign countries will not extradite someone here to the U.S. if there's any risk that they face the death penalty. Here, that does not seem to be an issue, but with other high-profile defendants, for example, El Chapo Guzman, uh, before Mexico would give him up, they had to seek assurances from the U.S. that he would not face the death penalty. But it is likely that this will be a lengthy process, even with a friendly country uh, with a very favorable extradition treaty. It could be years uh, before he sees the inside of a courtroom uh, in Virginia. Uh, MTIs, uh, what have we heard so far from the British authorities, if anything? We have. Uh, to put it bluntly, they're pretty delighted. Uh, this has been a seven-year thorn in their backside, and they're glad that uh, Mr. Assange is finally out of that building and in their custody. Now, as Paula was saying, this legal process could take a very, very long time. But I think for the U.K. authorities, that legal process has started. As we've been saying, we understand that Mr. Assange is very likely in front of a judge right now uh, where he will face uh, these, uh, at least these initial charges here in the U.K., which is essentially avoiding uh, bail. He sort of fleed, uh, fled a bail uh, charge. Uh, so that is where he is at now. But we have to remember, this not only involves the UK and the US, this also involves a number of other countries. WikiLeaks, which uh, Julian Assange is the founder of, uh, certainly has been involved in an extraordinary number of uh, releases, if you will, of sensitive information, sensitive information which includes the Vatican uh, and other places. And so one would imagine that the international implications, the global repercussions, of this are going to be very big as well. But what we do know for certain is that uh, over in Washington, there's uh, a lot of lawmakers who would like to see Mr. Assange uh, face a uh, judge over there as well. Just to springboard off of what MTS said, Paula, aside from the, the specific charges, just how important is it for the United States government to get Assange on United States soil? It's been a mission for a long time. We have to remember, most recently, Assange was accused of assisting in a Russian-backed effort to interfere in the U.S. election in 2016. 
U.S. prosecutors have charged 12 Russian operatives with hacking into Democratic Party emails and then disseminating them in an effort to interfere with the campaign. But, of course, WikiLeaks was the entity that helped them share those and disseminate that information. But long before the 2016 campaign, Assange and WikiLeaks have been a thorn in the side of U.S. law enforcement as they have released various CIA and military documents throughout the years. And today's indictment that has been unsealed mostly focused on that earlier conduct, including releasing these documents from former uh, Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning. All right, Paula Reed, MTS Type, thank you both so much.